welcome to SPICV studio. In this video, we are going to talk about the flexible buildings and rigid buildings. And as a structural engineer, how do you determine whether the building is a flexible or rigid? And also in the end, we'll see how these flexible and rigid buildings will be affected by the wind loads. And also if you are looking for a structural engineering course, which can enable you to design any RCC building from start to finish, then visit to our website aspirecivilstudio.com and check out our structural engineering courses. Through our courses, you will be able to design any RC building from start to end according to the Indian, American, British and the way building code. So let's get back to the topic. So first, uh, let us just understand what is uh, the flexible building and what is rigid building. So to elaborate this concept of uh, flexible and rigid buildings, I'm going to use American code AC716. Now uh, let's just go into section number 26.2. So here you can see a uh, buildings or other structures which are flexible. A slender building or other structure that have the fundamental natural frequency less than one hertz. So if there is a building having a natural frequency less than one hertz that will be called as flexible building now on the other hand for the rigid building the natural frequency will be greater than or equal to one hertz right so that is the difference so in order to determine whether the building is a flexible or a rigid you need to calculate the fundamental frequency first right so frequency is nothing but the number of cycle completed in a given time so if you want to calculate the frequency of a particular structure we have to refer section number 26.11.3 so here you can see uh, section number 26.11.2 frequency determination to determine whether the building is flexible or a rigid as defined in section number 26.2 the fundamental natural frequency shall be established using these formulas okay so you have to refer these formulas to calculate the natural frequency for example for a steel structure you will use this first formula for the concrete structure with the moment resisting frames moment resisting frames are nothing but the columns and beams right so if there is a building like a concrete building having columns and beams to resist the lateral forces you have to use the second formula for steel structure or a concrete building with the other lateral force resisting system you have to use this third formula and for a concrete building or a masonry shear wall building this is the formula you have to use and also you might know that the frequency is inversely proportional to time period so from the time period you can easily calculate the frequency of a particular building time period is nothing but the time taken to complete an oscillation so in order to determine whether the building is a flexible or a rigid you need to calculate the frequency first and again to calculate the frequency you need to determine the time period of the building okay so first let's see the formulas to determine the time period so we'll go to the section number 12.8.2.1 okay so here uh, on this section number 12.8.2.1 we have the formula to calculate the time period so the formula is like ta is equal to ct into hn power x okay so here ct is nothing but time period coefficient hn is nothing but the total height of a structure and x is another factor to calculate the time period of the building so ultimately you will have the value of hn which is the total height of a structure so these two factors you need to calculate ct and x values for those factors you can get from table number 12.82 uh, right so here you can see for a steel structure these are the values for the ct and this is the value 0.8 for x okay and for a concrete structure with a moment resisting frames these are the values for ct and this is the value for x so let's take some example and we'll elaborate this concept a bit more so we have already seen to determine whether the building is a flexible or rigid we need to calculate the uh, frequency of the building and to calculate the frequency we will need a value of a time period okay so first we need to calculate the time period then we need to calculate the frequency of a building and then at the last we will determine whether the building is flexible or a rigid right so first let's just calculate the time period so we have already seen the formula for the time period right the formula is ct into hn power x okay so as you can see here building a and b both are concrete buildings with the moment resisting frames okay so from this particular table we can get the value of ct and x so as you can see here concrete moment resisting frames so this is the matrix equivalent so we'll pick this one only 0 0.0466 this is the value of a ct and value of x is a 0 0.9 so we'll put that in the in this particular formula along with the hn which is the height of a structure 48 meters 
so according to that one the time period is a 1.51 seconds okay now we have got the time period for the building a so the formula for the frequency is this one na is equal to 1 upon time period so as you can see here the frequency is less than 1 hertz so the building is a flexible building okay we have already seen in the section number 26.2 if the building is having natural frequency less than 1 hertz it will be called as a flexible building okay now in the case of b building the hn which is the height of a building is only varying okay ct and x the values will be same so according to the value of h n c t and x the time period for the b building we are getting is 0.62 seconds okay again from this time period you can easily determine the natural frequency which is 1.59 so here the natural frequency is uh, greater than 1 hertz so b building is a rigid build so according to this example a building a is a flexible building and building b is a rigid building now let's see how this flexible and rigid building will be affected by the wind loads so to elaborate this concept we are going through a section number 26.11.4 So as you can see here, uh, this section number 26.11, which is for the gust effect factor. So this gust effect factor will be used to determine the wind load on the building. Okay. Now if you go into section number 26.11.4 for a rigid buildings and other structures. For a rigid buildings and other structure as defined in the section number 26.2, the gust effect factor value shall be taken as 0.85. So, if there is a rigid building and you want to apply the wind load on that particular rigid building, so for the calculation of wind load, you have to use a gust effect factor, right? So, the value of that gust effect factor in the case of rigid buildings will be constant as a 0.85, right? But in the case of flexible building, the gust effect factor you need to calculate from this formula only, as mentioned here. For a flexible or dynamic sensitive buildings and other structure as defined in the section number 26.2, the gust effect factor shall be calculated by using this formula. So you have lots of uh, unknown factors here, you need to determine those from these formulas and you will get the value of gust effect factor, right? And again you will use that gust effect factor to determine the wind loads that will be acting on your flexible building. So basically there are two points I want to clear through this video. The first one is like, let's say there is a building having natural frequency more than one hertz. So in that case, the building will be called as a rigid building as per section number 26.2 of ASE 716. So for such a rigid building, you have to apply a static effect of a wind load because the gust effect factor is a constant there. Like the gust effect factor value you have to consider is a 0.85 according to the ASE 716 code. And the second point I want to make is, let's say there is a building having natural frequency less than 1 hertz. So in that case, the particular building will be called as a flexible building because it is having a natural frequency less than 1 hertz. So for such building, you have to apply a dynamic effect of a wind load, which is also called as a dynamic wind load. Okay, so these are the two points I want to clear through this video. If you found this video helpful, then please subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Thank you so much for watching.